Just got to Edinburgh from Dornick. Drove straight after the round of golf. Um, the whole drive here, I was thinking about that round of golf, trying to put Dornick on my overall list of golf courses, and you know, trying to evaluate whether Pat's hype was real. <laughs> I think it was. Uh, Dornick was pretty sick. Uh, par threes, I think, at Dornick were the best set of par threes I've ever played in my life. Uh, man. And then the back nine, I thought was, I thought the back nine was really strong. Um, holes 14 onwards. Just a variety of par fours coming in. I loved that. Overall, like, really hard to beat. Really hard to beat that golf course. I've been acting like a wild man Sleeping like a child You're so luminous and vibrant I'm always in the blue for you Always in the blue Always in the blue for you What does golf mean to you? <laughs> um, that's a weird, that's not fair. I guess what I've learned as you get older, the golf course is a place where I can slow my mind down and just focus on one thing rather than my calendar and just everything that's going on in my day to day. At, at times it's also been my source of motivation, whether it's to get through school or my day-to-day -day job, or now parenting. Uh, you know, it gives you a bit of hope when you're buried in the lack of sleep. And the more we team up on TPL, I increasingly realize that golf is family. Here we are, uh, six months after we were filming Walter Weekend. Uh, we're a few weeks removed from our trip to the UK. You were adamant that you were removing yourself from amateur tournament golf. You sold your golf clubs. So I think I should be asking you the question, what is golf to you? I've been asked this question before, but typically I will avoid it um, simply because I don't feel like others will understand. Ever since I picked up a plastic club when I was five years old, it's been a part of my life, whether that's through family gatherings or travel, um, research, competition, uh, playing on teams and continuing the amateur competitive scene, or whether that's through working in the industry for 10, 10 plus years. Admittedly, it's contributed to some of the, the lowest moments in my life, um, but at the same time, it's, it's gifted me with some of the best moments and best memories in my life as well. And, you know, that's, that's why it's so special to me. Lowest being selling your golf clubs, or are you referring to something else? Uh, there's so many lows, it's hard to even pick one, but you witnessed one last fall, selling my golf clubs, but it's a uh, very, uh, it's a cycle. I don't know. How long is it? I think we can. 66. 
Okay. Part 7066. I think we should. <laughs> we'll tip it up. First view will be into the wind, I assume. Seven years since I've been here. Still, in my eyes, my favorite golf course in the world. In my, in my opinion, it's got the best set of par threes. Camargo's the closest that I've played that uh, maybe rivals Dornick here. Incredible par fours, a couple half par holes, a couple longer ones. Foxy looked incredible on the drone this morning. I'm super excited for this one. Um, it's been hyped by a selected few, and uh, I really know the hype's gonna be uh, be well worth it. I'm really excited, so let's go. Let's go, Dornick. I'm just hoping that uh, my hype doesn't let these guys down because I'm definitely not underselling it at this point. When it's calm, unlike today, this golf course is really scorable, which is good. Yeah, a lot of my friends and they go deep. I've had a few of them go like six, seven under, which is pretty impressive. But when it's like this, it's if you get one or two around, you're pretty happy, really. Yeah. It's a pretty good play. So, so I played up at Thurzo for a while, then I moved over to Ray, which is a Lynx course by the nuclear power plant up, up north. So yeah, I played there until I was 15, and then out to Canada for a few years, and then lucky enough to meet Forbes out there as well. What's the hole you fear the most out here? The hole I fear the most? Um, the second. The second's just evil hole. Miss it left, you're done. Miss it right, you're done. Long, you're done. Short's the only good one. Bunkers, you're done. Nice little dub on the second hole, par three. They're almost perfect tee shot. And we head over to what is one of my favorite reveals in the game of golf. Smash. <laughs> What's the play? <laughs> Putt? I can't 
my touch is not there to, to wedge off of this line. But. Yeah, whack the putter up there. Man. I remember Ruffy. I remember this. Big hop, looks pretty good. Yeah, good shot. Oh boy. I think it's a lot more beautiful scenic hole now. Like the hole was kind of hidden once you got to the green with the gorse and whatnot. And now with the new hole, it like opens up the whole ocean. You can walk along the side and see the beach and whatnot. I just think it adds to the beauty of this golf course. So nasty. <laughs> so this is probably one of the hardest part threes I think I've ever played. It's hard to keep it on the green. Surrounded by bunkers. Short's bad, left is bad, right is bad, long is bad. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say about this, this hole really. It's just like a perfect part three really. get to 11 T and it's uh, you know coming off a great par 3 and you have a decent length par 4 in the 11th hole it's uh, 449 yards from the back really this part of the course is you know it, I wasn't expecting it but this is what kicked off you know an exciting part of the golf course for me and the closing stretch is, um, is, is pretty strong and the whole golf course is strong but particularly when I was out there for my first time uh, this is the beginning of a great closing stretch at Dornan.
Of all golf holes that I've played in my life, I think that Foxy at Dornick places the most emphasis on angles, both on the tee shot, but also on the approach. And it all starts with the pinning location. If it's a left flag, favor the right center off the tee. You might bring the blind elements into play with the fingers coming in off the right side of the fairway. If the pin's on the right side or even center, just hit the left center, you'll have the clearest angle into the green. 15th hole, shortest par four on the course. Uh, if it's downwind, certainly drivable, and you can at least get around the green, and scoring opportunity if you navigate the greenside bunkers appropriately. 16 takes a lot of flack if, you know, based on uh, stuff you read online about 16, you know, it's kind of known as the weakest hole on the course. Not sure I agree with that. When I crest the hill right in front of the 17th green, I can't help but think of Bill and Ben and how they must have got some influence from this green site. There's such elevation change, but it's spread out over such a big scale that it makes perfect sense. What's the read? It's right to left of the first. I think, the, I think, yeah, I think the, the finishing hole and the finishing stretch was ultra special for me just because of the way I, you know, I clutched up and I executed. We were playing for some swag in the shop and uh, I just had to birdie 18 and uh, it was a good feeling. But at the same time, thinking about Dornick as a whole, it was I was already thinking about the golf course as a whole and thinking about, you know, like, what did I just play and, you know, is this my favorite course that I've ever played? It might be. So like I was already thinking about that walking off 18. I thought the back nine was really strong. Um, holes 14 onwards. Just a variety of part fours coming in. I loved that. Overall, like, really hard to beat. Really hard to beat that golf course. Absolutely loved it. TBD on where it ranks for me all time, but so far in Scotland, it's it's top two. Top two for me. Mirrorfield tomorrow, though. Pumped for that. It's supposed to be a great day. Meeting up with the other boys early. And, uh... We'll see how it goes, but man, Dornick, whew, that was sick. The reason I love Dornick so much, and after having made a few visits there now, um, is that it combines the right amount of uh, challenge. Uh, it has brilliant turf. Uh, it has architectural genius in places, especially around the greens on the part threes and uh, it's the right amount of therapy as well in terms of, uh, it sort of combines like what you might get at a sagebrush or uh, a port salon in, in Ireland. Um, it just, you know, things slow down when you're at Dornan.